Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. And now we're going to be talking with Shabri Vickers, who is the Director of Community Relations and Diversity Programs at Big Brothers Big Sisters Columbia Northwest. Thanks for being here, Shabri. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Oh, you're welcome. So Big Brothers Big Sisters Columbia Northwest has been an organization that's been around for quite a while. Um, yeah, we were founded in 1904. You were there, <laughs> so right? A, a, uh -huh. a yeah. long time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a long, long time. Tell me a little bit, if you would, about the mission. Uh, has it changed from when it started, do you know? Do you know some of the history of that? Yeah, I do. Well, the interesting thing is mentoring wasn't, wasn't new in 1904, and it certainly isn't new or innovative now. Um, the one thing that we're certain of is it's still needed, still mm -hmm. highly sought after, and um, still making a huge impact in the community. Um, when, you know, we were founded by a group of judges who continued to see young kids come in front of them and with different issues and they said, you know, if there was just a person in their life that could really help guide them and connect them to, you know, pro-social activities, then that could be, uh, make a huge impact. And so Big Brothers uh, was founded in 1904 and on the other side of New York, um, a group of nuns started Big Sisters and in 1930 oh. they came together and forevermore have been Big Brothers Big Sisters. I don't and think I knew that. Yeah, That's so the mission good. has has been uh, very similar, connecting children, uh, specifically those who, who uh, don't have as many adult connections in their life to someone who can help guide them, be a friend, you know, not a teacher, not a tutor, not a social worker, just right. a friend. Somebody um, who can just be there for them. Exactly, and, yeah. and help guide, I mean, it, a professional mentor is, is so, you know, everyone knows that you have to have someone to kind of tell you where sure. to go. And for kids, grow, you know, they just want to get to where we are, grown up. And so um, oftentimes that just means connecting them specifically and being really intentional around who we put in their lives. What, what kids need mentoring or what, I, I would think most any kid could benefit <laughs> from some kind of mentoring, but yeah. which one specifically? Yeah get involved with Big Brothers Big Sisters? So um, all kids need a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's great for any kid to have a mentor. Um, but specifically for us, what we look at is serving children who have had some sort of um, adverse childhood experience. Um, and that ranges, right? It, it, and it and be every a huge age. range. Yeah. I'm sure. So um, you know, children who maybe just grow up in a single parent household and having um, an additional support system there, you know, can really make an impact. So you might see a local mother um, who has a son and she really just wants him to be connected to um, a big brother who can kind of show him the ropes yeah. and you know talk with him when he has um, issues that guys have and, <laughs> and really be able to connect to you know in a yeah. way that a mom may not be able to right. as a single parent um, and then we have children who kind of on the f other far end of the spectrum um, could be you know have a, a parent who's incarcerated or mm. been in the foster care system we have many children who've been placed multiple times throughout their life. Mm. And so being able to have one continuous uh, person who's there on a consistent basis, um, no matter how many different placements they've had that year, is almost certainly the most impactful relationship that they will have ever had. Um, and so it's one of the things that we are honored to be able to connect with and to be able to serve our, our community through. It's a great thing. So what kind of a commitment then do you require from your the bigs, the big brothers and the big sisters? Yeah, you know, oftentimes, uh, this is one of the, my favorite myths that I get to bust. Um, we <laughs> ask people to think about doing it for a year. So if you live and work in, you know, in a particular area, for us, it's the Columbia Northwest area. Uh, we serve in seven counties. Um, just being able to say, I'll be there for at least a year, you know, if you're not planning on moving anywhere soon. Um, and then hanging out a few times a month. I like to say there are about 720 hours in a month, give or, give or take a few days. And uh, the idea is spending about five or six of those hours throughout that month with a little brother or little sister. And for many people, it becomes something that when they, you know, when I put it in that kind of framework, they go, well, I have five or six hours. Sure, that doesn't sound and like so, that much. And so, yeah, it could, it could range from hanging out twice a month to four times a month. We have some people who get together every single Saturday at 10 a.m., it's time to hang out with their little brother. And we have some who might see a little brother or sister twice in a week and not again for, you know, another right. week or so. But really the idea is consistency and communication. When a child knows that they can, uh, can plan on seeing someone again. Someone who, again, isn't a teacher, not a social worker, not a counselor, not a tutor, not a, a parent, not a step parent. Someone who's just there to be a friend um, under no other auspices. That is so important. And kids see that, they feel that. And for our most vulnerable children, it's something that they seek um, and sure. something that we have sure. so many children who are currently 
actively waiting uh, for big brothers and big sisters so to step up. So there's a waiting list. We have, you know, in seven counties, we definitely have, there are thousands of kids in the areas that we serve who have called us, who are on uh, what we call our ready to be matched list. Um, and we have many others who we won't even put on that ready to be matched list because essentially it changes from a wait list to more of a no list. Mm -hmm. No, I can't serve you. No, I can't get that big brother or big yeah. sister that you're looking for. No, you can't go out and do all these really cool things that you're looking for. Um, that we know that kids who do have big brothers and big sisters get to experience. Yeah. Tell me about you personally, Shabri. Yeah. You um, you are the Director of Community Relations and mm -hmm. Diversity Programs. Yeah. But you've had some personal experience with, yeah. with the big brothers yeah. and big sisters. Yeah, I'm kind of all in. <laughs> I'm kind of all in. Do you I, mind sharing that with I us? I don't. I don't at all. So I actually started um, volunteering with the agency back in 2007, not as a big sister. Um, I am a single mom and I had a two-year-old at that time. Um, but I served on the African American Advisory Board and did for a while before I came in as a staff member. And now I am not only a staff member, but uh, a, big, a big sister as well to an incredible little girl named Asia. Um, absolutely wonderful. How old is Asia? Asia is eight, and so she is absolutely a delight. She literally runs up to me when I go and visit her at school and gives me like one of those movie hugs. <laughs> it's awesome. I, you know, if I need to feel important, I go and see Asia. It really helps. And also, um, my daughter, my seven-year-old daughter, has a big sister in our program. So oh, wow. I kind of am coming at it from all different um, angles and, and areas, and I couldn't be happier. The agency has really been able to support me as a as a mother in the community um, who's looking for an additional support system for sure, my daughter. Sure. Um, what does that do for you to have another woman oh. helping it's 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 kind of essentially helping raise your daughter. Even though you're doing the raising, yeah, yeah. she has some influence and some input in her life. It's I'm so sure. important, you know. As a single mom, I am am doing a lot. I, I can't do both, you know, mom and dad. But I'm usually do your homework, you know, eat your peas and <laughs> um, clean your room and all kinds of things like that. So to be able to un, to know that Layla has um, an incredible big sister in Abby. Abby's her big sister. Um, it really means a lot. You know, when Layla has an issue and doesn't want to talk to me because I just told her to clean her room. Because your Abby, mom and right, you, yeah, mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah, then Abby serves as someone uh, that she can connect to, someone that takes her to movies, they go get their nails done, um, they make chili, they, you know, oh, do pumpkins. And so it doesn't detract or impede my ability to be a mom, you know. Um, and do you have a relationship with Abby? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah it's so. a great. I mean, it's it's literally like having um, like a sister who yeah. you know kind of hangs out with Layla and the, the their favorite relationship, aunt kind of right, thing. literally. Yeah. And Layla, I mean, it's it's so important to me because I know that oftentimes by the time I do get home from work and. I'm tired and you know, I read the the good night book, but she wants more <laughs> and I'm just like, come on. But at least I know that when she sees Abby, um, and Abby is the absolute best big sister, uh, you know, a person could ask for, a mother could ask for, she, um, they, she has act, um, energy and they go out and do a lot of the things that I maybe am not able to do. I can't go to the zoo all the time with her. Yeah. I can't, um, you know, do a lot of things that Abby's able to do with That's her. That's great. That's yeah. great. Now you brought a few pictures of um, a big brother and big mm -hmm. sister. And I believe it's Aaron is the big so brother. So Aaron Douglas is a big brother and yeah. Kevin is his little brother. Okay, so if we can take a look at those pictures yeah. now and maybe you can tell me a little bit about their relationships. Let's see if we can bring yeah. those up. Yeah, for sure. So, um, let's see. And Aaron is, um, okay, that's Aaron on. Yeah, yeah so on Aaron the on the left and Kevin on the right. This is when uh, Kevin was really little. They were matched at the eight, when Kevin was 12. Um, Kevin will be turning 19 in December. Wow. So it's been a long time that they've been connected. Kevin officially graduated the Big Brothers Big Sisters program not too long ago. And as you can see as the, <laughs> the pictures progress, Kevin and Aaron have an incredible relationship. Oh, and this wow. is probably um, the, the epitome of a success story for us. Kevin just graduated um, um, boot camp. And so oh. he is really excited to be able to serve our country and um, to be able to give back in the, in the similar way that Aaron did. How us. wonderful is that? That is so great. It's so incredible. They've kept up this relationship for seven years. And, you know, Kevin has gone through so much, you know, in and out of foster homes and being connected back to mom. And Aaron, uh, his big brother, has literally been, I mean, if there was a poster, a poster child for a great big brother, Aaron has been that. You know, he's been there. Um, he was at his graduation. And Aww. one of the things that he sent me in a, in a recent email, he said, you know, 
I was um, was there with mom and family uh, during his graduation, and we were, uh, you know, the only other folks that were there that weren't family. And at that point, I, I finally realized that maybe I've made an impact. And I said, "That this is the first time, you know." And he <laughs> realized that if, if Kevin wanted me there, you know, when he was graduating, then he knew that he had really made an impact. And I said. The fact that you've been around for seven years is probably that, that the idea. Yeah. But um, and he has family by that time. Oh, that I mean, is family. you know, most of our most of our big brothers and big sisters, we have one of the highest retention rates in the country at our Columbia Northwest agency. Really? And so I just kudos. I really <laughs> a kudos to our yeah, community. You know, we're the largest mentoring agency on the West Coast, and that didn't happen because we're here. That happened because community members are continuing to step up and say, "This is a need. I can meet it." And, and they get started and they're together for seven years and Doesn't it's incredible. Does that make you feel good? I mean, that, I mean. It does. It, make, it, it makes me um, feel happy about having my daughter as a part of the program, you know, being a volunteer within the program now and my second little sister um, and being a staff member. I know yeah. that when I come to work every day, just like so many incredible uh, nonprofit organizations in the, in the Portland area, um, I'm blessed to be able to connect with so many kids and you're making a difference connect them with folks yeah. yeah so tell me what are the biggest needs that you have at Big Brothers Big Sisters? Goodness um, I would say we're a nonprofit so outside of money right yeah. <laughs> every nonprofit can always, will say always that. use that um, for us it would be Big Brothers um, mm -hmm. specifically Big Brothers more uh, than Big Sisters more than Big Sisters and, and I'll give you I'll give you just a, a bit of information so 70% of the kids that come to us looking for mentors are boys. Mm. However, 70% of the people that come to us to be mentors are, are women. women. So boys are always waiting longer. Oftentimes they can age out or they can just never be matched. Oh, um, and by the time sad. they move or by the time we do call them, they may not be in the same area. And so for us, you know, getting big brothers um, to step up and become, uh, you know, uh, or getting men to step, to step up and become big brothers is such an important thing for us. And um, specifically as the community continues to kind of be dispersed and stretch out in different places, you know, whether it's East County and things like that, ensuring that we can connect um, children to the same services that they've been, you know, used to for so long mm -hmm. is really important. So Big Brothers and East County and, you know, um, is really something that's very important to us. Okay. Now, um, before we run out of time, there was yeah. something I heard about big couples. Yes. What, what's that about? Yeah. So we, one of the things that we've done to kind of combat the need for Big Brothers is to um, establish really incredible programs and so big couples is a way for both um, for two people in a committed relationship to get together and mentor one child um, and so with the understanding that oftentimes guys can be um, not necessarily coerced but um, kind Maybe of a helped along the way to, to yeah if, if, uh, if a, a, a partner of theirs is also interested in the program then uh, we know that that was a way to garner more male mentors and um, so, so the idea is the so thing. With, the, with, the, with the two, with the couple mentor one child, yeah, is that yeah. how they do it? And okay. we have an, an incredible amount of what we call big couples and oftentimes people are surprised that that's an opportunity. Uh, and so we have so many people who come to it and uh, come to that idea of mentoring um, from all different walks of life. And it's great to be able to do something in the community that you can engage in together. That's wonderful. Um, and, and make such an impact is huge. And we have so many great big couples um, who get together and just do some of the coolest things and they get to do it as a couple. I bet there's a lot of people who have never thought about that. I've never yeah. heard about that, so I think that's yeah. wonderful. Not every agency around the U.S. does it, but uh, we're so excited to have I it think here. That's a, I think that's a super idea. <laughs> well, we're just about out of time, Shabri, yeah. so what, what do you want to leave us with? What's, what's the most important thing we should know about Big Brothers Big Sisters? Um, that most people, can, most people can do it. You know, when yeah. if, if you're thinking it would be too hard, oftentimes I have folks who, who become a Big Brother and they go, oh, if, if everyone just knew that it really is easy, it really is. It doesn't require. No, it, you know, there's huge, no special, huge time commitment. there's no special class you need to go through. Obviously we have orientations and things uh -huh. like that, but really if you can be a friend um, and you can be consistent and, and keep open communication lines open, then um, that's all you need. And so um, we look forward to folks going on our website and finding out how to connect with us um, and become a big brother or a big sister. Um, we have thousands of kids in the seven counties that we serve. Um, again, who are interested and in looking forward to uh, spending time with a big brother or a big sister. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shabri. I appreciate yes. you being here tonight. And if you're interested in being a big brother, a big sister, or part of a big couple, this is something you need to check out because it sounds like it's an easy, an easy thing to do, just a, a small commitment of your time. 
but it's your it's your good heart that that the, the kids need. So, be able to check. Be sure to check it out on the website. And um, if you need more information, you can contact Big Brothers Big Sisters. And I'd be happy to tell you everything you need to know and get you involved. And please don't go away. We'll be right back with our last segment of Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. I'll see you in a moment. <laughs>